This lesson is about soloing. In soloing, we have several things to think about. What vocabulary are we going to use, which would be the motives that we play? Then how do we organize those motives? And what is the context that we play them in? So when I was younger, I used to think of every little phrase was a, a unique individual entity. And, but what happened was I had a hard time remembering all of them. So I've come to find a different way of organizing material in my brain. I basically think of having two separate files of information. And one file is what I would call motives. And a motive might be a five-stroke roll, or a paradiddle, or something else. That's a motive. And then we have treatments. So what is a treatment? A treatment is what instruments do you play it on? What direction do you move? What rate of speed do you play it? Do you add one note or subtract one note from it? So I use those same five or six treatments with each motive. For example, if we play um, paradiddles, I can play paradiddles on the snare drum. Now I can think of those paradiddles as 16th notes. But I can also play paradiddles at the triplet rate if I change the tempo. So that's a treatment, is changing the rate of the phrase. Then changing the instruments, the orchestration of it. It could be... That may sound like two or three different things, but in my brain, that's just paradiddles. Or I could play it... That's just paradiddles. But I know the melodies that paradiddles on different instruments create. And that's what I'm trying to, trying to play when I play them. I'm actually not thinking of paradiddles, I'm thinking of the melodies that a paradiddle creates, and that this melody is the right thing, the right musical choice in this moment. So then with the same kind of idea, if we play paradiddles, uh, maybe and we'll play a paradiddle, and then one more note, and then a bass drum note, In my brain, that's just another treatment of paradiddles. And I can play that. In, the, in these different formats, uh, I can also play it at different rates of speed. So my, my idea is to have a collection of good drumming words that I have four or five different ways to, to pronounce. And each one has a slightly different effect on the music. Now we have to organize this stuff in a way that tells some kind of story. And to demonstrate that, it can be interesting if we don't use any motives, just use sounds, and maybe even play rubato, play out of time. So can you tell a story playing the drums without playing any drum licks, but just thinking about musical form? And in that case, we have to deal with repetition to convince the listener that we intend what we're doing. 
And what's important here is to, play, to, to establish a motive and then make the story take some kind of transition into another area and then return back to the first motive so it feels like a complete statement. When you have drum licks to use, this becomes um, easier. But it's also an interesting challenge. Can you do this kind of thing without playing any licks? Can you remember what you just played so that you can repeat it? That's the only way a listener can, hear, can find any logic in what you're doing. So let me try an experiment. Um, and I'm going to try and play a solo that has a beginning, a middle, and an end, but not playing any drum licks and not playing in tempo. But let, let's see what happens. So what I'm trying to convey is that we need to repeat our ideas to convince the listener that we know what we're doing. And I want to imagine that non-musicians are listening to me. And I want to play something where they can kind of hear that there's some logic and there's some story to it. Imagine you want to play in a way so that your mother can understand what's going on. And that having a motive that you repeat, whether it's paradiddles or five-stroke rolls or some other kind of motive, but having this kind of organization that I'm talking about on top of the motive gives the solo a kind of structure and a kind of order that's similar to the form of a song. And because we're dealing with abstract sounds, we have to be even more aware of structure to make things have some kind of logic. One time I asked Max Roach, um, you know, he's known as the most melodic drummer. So I asked him, are you thinking about melody when you're playing? And he told me, no, I'm thinking about architecture. I'm thinking about structure. And so, if you have a nice structure that people can understand, then the melodic material um, can be as varied as you want. And that's, this is a good way to approach trying to have some melodic and musical kind of approach to your soloing. Give it a try. 